Welcome back. Today I'll teach you how I prepared for neurology and neural system for my step 1 exam. Neurology was the topic that I enjoyed most during my preparation. And actually my highest grade in medical school was in neurology system. So without further ado, I'll teach you how to prepare for neurology for your step 1 exam. Let's start off with the circulation of the neural system. For the spinal cord, there is not really much to talk about, it's just three arteries, so remember them and that's that. But for the brain, you have to know all the branches of the circle of willies. The best way that I've found to memorize the circle of willies is that I imagine a small emboli within the heart, and this emboli have managed to get to the anterior lobe, for example, of the brain, and block certain arteries. And I would imagine the pathway of this emboli as it travels from the heart all the way to the brain. That way you can remember not only the branches of circle of willies, but also the arteries that make it. Try to repeat the scenario of a small emboli within the heart reaching the brain for every branch of the circle of willies. Drainage of the brain is also very important. You need to know the venous sinuses of the brain. I made a video about the venous sinuses of the brain and how to remember them, so you can check that out if you want to. There are two very important pathologies related to circulation. Infarction of arteries or intracranial bleeds. These are actually very important. And I've covered most of the stuff that you'll need to know about them in these videos. Also related to the brain, you need to know which areas of the brain are most vulnerable to ischemia. Actually, I'm going to put them right here. And one very, very important topic is that you need to know the appearance of the neurons after ischemia under the light microscope. I've summarized the most important features and I'm also going to put them right here. So within the first day, we're going to have red neurons. Within the third day, we're going to have neutrophils and filtration. And by the fifth day, we're going to have macrophages. And by day 14, we're going to have gliosis and new vascularization. After that, we're just going to have a scar. You'll also need to know the CSF flow, all the way from the lateral ventricles to the subarachnoid granulation. Cavernous sinus syndrome is also a must-have in the exam, so you'll need to know what arteries and nerves pass through the cavernous sinus. So that pretty much covers everything that's very important for the circulation for the brain. And let's talk about the embryology of the brain. You'll need to know the three primary vesicles and the secondary vesicles. I've also made a video about them, so you can check it out if you want to. Also related to embryology of the brain, you have to know these pathologies. Neural tube defects, holoprosencephalons, Chiari syndromes, and Dandy Walker syndrome. I don't recommend wasting too much time on these syndromes, but just know enough to be able to differentiate between them. And here I've summarized all the very important diseases for neurology. These are the high yield diseases. So if you're short on time and you don't have much time, you can actually start by studying these diseases. And if you have any more time, you can study the other ones. But I would recommend that you start with those. These are the spinal tracts that you have to know. And also try to be familiar with the spinal cord shape in different segments. Sleep physiology and sleep stages are also very common target for questions. I also made a video about them so you can check them out if you want to. These are the stuff that you'll have to know about the cranial nerves. Skin dermatomes are important, but at the same time not really, so I would recommend that you keep it last. I don't see how studying every single dermatome would benefit you, to be honest, so I would recommend just keeping it last. But you'll have to know the nerves involved in certain muscles reflexes. I'm going to put here all the important muscles and their nerves. 
when it comes to the cells that make the neural system, try to know the very superficial information about them. For, so, for example, astrocytes make the blood brain barrier and they provide nutrition. Microglia are protective, they're like WBCs but within the neural system. Oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells are for myelin sheets. So, these are the stuff that you'll have to focus on, not really anything deep within the cells. A question about the blood-brain barrier is a must-have in the exam. You have to know what makes the blood-brain barrier and what are the exception areas of blood-brain barrier and what the exception ions and materials or substances that can pass through the blood-brain barrier. I've made a video about the blood-brain barrier explaining all of these things. You'll also have to know the synthesizing nucleus of the following substances. For example, serotonin is mostly synthesized in the RAF nucleus, norepinephrine is mostly synthesized in the Lucas Ceres nucleus. These are very, very important. For the thalamus and hypothalamus, I would recommend that you study everything superficially, unless if you studied everything else and you have nothing left, then you could go more deep in studying the thalamus and hypothalamus. So again, they're one of the stuff that you have to leave last, unless if you have everything covered so you can study them now. Aphasia and dysarthria are also very important. I've also made a video about them so you can check it out. It basically covers everything that you need to know. Cerebellar physiology and anatomy is also very important. You can check this video out for the cerebellar physiology and anatomy. The basal ganglia is arguably the most tedious subject. I learned to memorize the basal ganglia rather than to understand it. And I've put a method that if you memorize it very well, you can answer any question about the basal ganglia. You can find this method in this video. When it comes to the tumor of the neural system, I would recommend studying each of them superficially and having the ability to differentiate between them. So don't go too deep in studying them, but be able to differentiate between them. Each tumor have one striking feature that differentiates it from other tumors. And finally, for pharmacology, try to focus on the following medications and the following topics. Alright guys, so that's my way of studying for neurology and preparing for neural system. This might not be the most efficient way of studying neurology for certain people, but I do believe that if you covered all of the topics that I've mentioned, you should be in good shape. Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully I made this easier for you, and I'll see you guys later.